Turkey has launched fresh airstrikes on positions of the outlawed Kurdistan Workers' Party in northern Iraq. Turkish fighter jets took off from Diyarbakir in southern Turkey and pounded the PKK's bases in Mount Kandil. Now, Turkey launched the airstrikes after a string of attacks in recent days against its security forces that have been blamed on the PKK militants. Erdogan Ankara called for a meeting of its NATO allies to discuss its airstrikes on ISIL and PKK positions and what it described as threats to its security. NATO said the North Atlantic Council will convene on Tuesday after Ankara invoked the alliance's Article 4. The article allows any member to request a meeting of all 28 ambassadors whenever they believe their territorial integrity, political independence and security is threatened. Meanwhile, a Turkish police officer has been killed in clashes with anti-government protesters in Istanbul during the third day of violent protests in the city. Security officials say the officer was shot in the chest from inside a building while he tried to make an arrest. The protesters were angry over last week's bomb attack against a group of Kurdish activists in the border town of Suruç. They also voiced opposition to Ankara's policies in Syria and Iraq, as well as the recent airstrikes in the two countries. Similar rallies were also held in the capital, Ankara. speak to the managing editor of Veterans Today, Jim W. Dean. He joins us via Skype from Atlanta. Many thanks for joining us here on Price TV, Mr. Dean. Now, first of all, let's look at these airstrikes that have taken place in northern Iraq. Sy Syria was targeted by Turkey as well. Isn't that violating two countries' sovereignty? Well, it, it is, but it's something that Turkey's been doing for a, a long time. Uh, in, in a way, when you have the Kurdish forces using our broken rat, Excuse me, as a uh, uh, as a base, and they have launched attacks in uh, Turkey before. Uh, you have the right for retaliation, but the Kurds have not really been uh, active uh, in the uh, on the Iraq border. Uh, they've primarily been active against ISIS uh, along the uh, on the northern Syria border, uh, trying to cut off, uh, take control of the checkpoints where. Uh, Supplies from Turkey for ISIS and men and injured people going across the border uh, have been interrupted uh, by the Kurds. So this seems to be very suspicious that this bombing came out of the blue, which actually killed Erdogan's uh, opponents. It's instantly uh, uh, put a, at the feet of ISIS, although ISIS has claimed it, when everybody knows that Turkey's been supporting ISIS uh, more than a little bit. So this is very strange. And then uh, the cherry on top is the call a NATO meeting and claim that the territory is being uh, threatened uh, when this dispute has been going on forever. It's really an abuse of all the NATO ministers uh, to be called in uh, while Eric and Sam show here. Well, speaking of all the NATO members being called in, how far do you see Turkey taking this forward? Do you think Turkey will uh, demand a full NATO engagement when it comes to Syria or Iraq under the pretext of protecting what it called, as you've just mentioned, its security and territorial integrity? Uh, it seems like a Hail Mary pass. Uh, there would be bound to be opposition amongst the NATO countries. I uh, also would make uh, Erdogan look small. Uh, he's got a huge military there, lots of air power, big army. Uh, he can do anything he wants there. He doesn't need NATO. So really, it's going to make him look small, like he's trying to take advantage of the NATO situation, where if they say no, he can then claim to be a victim. So you've got the uh, uh, the new sultan manipulator here, and there's uh, I couldn't put anything past him to try to attempt to do to get any advantage of it in the situation whatsoever. Okay, that's uh, Jim W. Dean, Managing Editor of Veterans Today, joining us via Skype from Atlanta. Mr. Dean, it's always good to talk to you on Press TV.